All right, so now I want to build out some little tubey things that I can throw into an insert mesh brush uh, so that we can easily apply some smaller detail to this uh, these pieces here. So I have created this. This is uh, just four sub tools, and this is what the geometry looks like. If I put it all in one poly group, you can kind of see what's happening here. It's just a cylinder that I extruded and added cross edges to. Uh, you can either use the Z-Modeler brush or you can use Slice Curve, which lives here in the same menu as Select Lasso and Select Rect. Uh, right here, you just hold Control Shift to access it. And with Slice Curve, you can just add a slice, just like that, pretty simple. But one thing that's very important to mention if you're using Slice Curve is perspective will distort the line. So if I do this, it might look okay from this view, but if I turn it, you can see it's like tilted up slightly and it's even more noticeable, I would assume, if I come over here, right? We start to get like that, that perspective distortion. So you just have to turn perspective off and then when you apply your slices, it'll go right through exactly as you expect. So uh, as I demonstrated in the part one tutorial series on insert mesh brushes, if you, if you wanna have it conform to a, a curved surface, you can, it's very simple. There's a, there's a slider in the brush modifiers that will allow you to do that, but you gotta make sure you've got enough geometry in the insert mesh so that you can do that, right? So if this was just a cylinder, it would just lay, it would always be a straight stick, but if I add some cuts to it, then you can see it will, it'll uh, conform to a curved surface a little bit more easily. So they've got some, some of these edge loops are uh, creased, so that when I turn on my dynamic sub D, this is what I get. And we can just kind of run through, I'll show, sort of show you. It's all just very simple stuff, like it's randomly just adding little insets and, and outcroppings and whatnot. And we have four of them here. So in order to create an insert multi-mesh brush, we need to go to the same menu here in the brush menu. I'm gonna go ahead and expand this. And you just go to create, in, uh, create insert multi-mesh. And now you can see all of those subtools are now available to me as insert mesh brushes. What I'd like for this to do is I want it to randomly pick one of these every time I put a stroke down on my geometry. So we're gonna create a sphere 3D, tap the F key here to zoom in on it. I'm gonna make it a poly mesh so that I can actually edit it. And we're gonna look at the settings that we need to update in order to make it so that uh, we can apply these randomly. Like right now, if I if I draw it, this is what we get. You see it's the exact same one over and over again. So the first thing we've got to do is make sure we are sitting on the first multi-mesh. So you can see here as I toggle this value, these things are going to update. So we want to be on the, in this case, they call it the, the, the zeroth index or whatever, like the, the, the first one up here is going to be zero. We need to set this value all the way up to three. So we've got, this is going to be zero, one, two, three. So we're going to be using everybody here. And then uh, in terms of variations, I think we want to set this to f uh, three or four as well. These can be the same value if you want to use everybody. And then this thing here, the variations uh, selector mode, if you hold, you can see here it's popping up the, the hint, but if you hold control, it'll give you a little bit more information about that. And this is the case for everything. You can, you can hold control and, and, and you'll get a little more information about whatever's going on here. So we can see that the third option, or I guess in this case, uh, option three, the fourth option is random. So I'm gonna just bump this up to three and we should be seeing these randomly cycle through. And that's what we're getting. So the next thing that we wanna do is set these up so that they're actually conforming to the surface. So we can turn projection strength up to 100. And this is our, our new result here. You can see it'll get a little bit crazy if it starts to hit uh, another insert mesh brush, so or insert mesh that you've applied. So just be aware of that. But you can see uh, very quickly and easily, we can add some interesting pipes. So at this point, I'm gonna go ahead, let me look at the embed value. I think the, the embed is fine, whatever it is, it's gonna be over here in uh, depth. So I guess the embed is set to five, that might be the default value, uh, and it looks pretty good. So with that uh, in its current state, we can go ahead and save this brush. We'll go to save as, and I've already got this one 
blocked in from, a, from an earlier test. And I'm going to call this one IMM for Insert Multi Mesh, which will make it easy to search for. And we'll call this one, where is it? Uh, tubes01. So if you store it, or if you save it in the same location that I did, which is going to be Program Files, Pixel Logic, ZBrush 2821, Z Startup, and then Brush Presets, it will load into the default uh, brush menu and you won't have to go into the light box uh, to find it. So now that we have that brush set up, we can take a look at applying it here to our cicada. I think I'm going to try to put it into these little, this little uh, circular indent. But uh, one thing I can already tell is going to be an issue is when I try to apply it to the geometry, it's going to, because we've got that uh, projection multiplier set so high, it's going to just ride the, uh, the contours of that surface. So what I want to do here is, is actually modify this piece of geometry so that I can have a flat surface uh, with which to work. So we're going to go ahead and, and just make a very quick little change here. We'll do an insert edge loop there. And then I'm going to just grab probably these guys here and these here. And we'll just do a Q mesh. And I'm going to, well, Q mesh, I guess this is kind of thin. So Q mesh is going to try to put, like, uh, punch it through if it can. And I don't want it to go all the way through. I, I, I just want it to do an extrude. So I'll make sure that to polygroup all. And now we get a little bit more of like a hollow cavity to work with it. You can see it, we've got a little problem, a kind of problem here where it's intersecting with this this uh, inside polygroup. So we'll just do an inflate and give ourselves a little more room back here. Hopefully that won't matter. Oh, looks looks like it's causing problems here. Whatever, this is a, uh, we'll just see if this works. I'm gonna go ahead and just put all of this stuff here onto, well, not the sidewalls, onto one poly group, and then we'll flatten it out. So we'll isolate, and uh, this is the move brush, and we'll just kind of see where that takes us. So that's okay. I wouldn't mind if this was maybe a little bit more uh, well defined. We may get some weird pinching, but I'll try to do a crease poly group. So that's okay. Again, I'm mostly just looking for like a flat surface that I can apply this uh, these tubes to. That's that's kind of nice how that transitions smoothly like that. So anyway, well, let's see. Back to our insert multi mesh brush. Uh, we can leave everything with the settings as they currently are, and we'll just take a look. So you can see well, as soon as it starts to get close to what's going on there, it, it will um, start to to pop up, right? That's okay. I'm just going to place a few of these, keeping an eye on whether or not they're being distorted. Okay. So now that we've got that, I'm going to go ahead and show you the polygroups here. You can see everything is all very, very colorful in this last one. We'll just do an auto groups. And then I can isolate the stuff, uh, these uh, the new tubes that I've added, and we'll just do a uh, group split. So split hidden. Oops, looks like I I caught this guy on that as well. So whatever, no big deal. We can actually just uh, I'm going to hit X to turn off symmetry, and we'll just delete that stuff. We can just mirror it over when we're done. But uh, what I would like to do now is actually orient these so they're packed more closely together. So I'm going to just isolate each one, show, show them all again, and then uh, invert the mask. And if I use the transpose tool, it's super easy to just kind of scoot everything into place. So we'll just nestle these all up together. So these are the exact same. I don't want them, I don't want it to be super obvious what I'm doing here. So I'll just kind of scoot these over here and you can see I've got a little bit, like I've lost my 
Uh, it's everything here is a little bit twisted, but that's okay. I think I'm probably gonna end up, or not twisted, but slanted. I think I'm gonna end up modifying these just using the the move brush. So if they're a little squishy, it's okay. And then we're just going to want to make sure that they're all kind of the same size. And oriented approximately in the same place. Make sure I got the right one selected here. So that's W for moving. And then this will be a rotate. And this orange one's kind of a little on the high side. So we'll just scoot it down a little bit. All right, so there they are. Let's hide the wing. Tap the F key to zoom out just a little bit. And I'm just gonna use the regular transform gizmo We'll center it in the middle, and I'm going to zoom it up, and we'll squash it a bit. Just trying to get it here, comfortably sitting in that little nook that we made for it. And then I'll use the move brush here. to give it a little bit of curvature up, but then we can just kind of scoot it down. Sometimes I go to select the brush and it wants to give me the option to select all of them. All right, so this is actually a, a nice little opportunity here to show you one more useful variation on the move brush, which is the move topological brush, I think they call it. So I've tapped the M key and it looks like this. It's just the move brush, but it's got the uh, the wireframe on it. And what that means is wherever you click, it's going to basically look at whether or not anything else within the the uh, the, the brush there is actually uh, like how how far away it is topologically, and if it's on a separate mesh, it'll just be ignored. So it becomes very easy to make adjustments like this, where you've got things that are super close together or even touching, and you want to just mess with one little part of it. So whatever, right? Like we're all just, we're just experimenting, showing some stuff. So maybe that's okay. Now we want to mirror it over. We'll just go to uh, geometry, mirror and weld, and then we need to duplicate this piece too. And we'll go ahead and turn our wing on again. And there you go. So that's a, a quick and easy way to add tubes and, and similar kinds of details uh, using Insert Multi-Mesh.